Nulla Tenasi in Via Est Via. For the tenacious, no road is impassable. That is the motto of this spectacular 1903 racing car, the Spiker 6080. Made here in Holland by the Spiker Motor Company, the Dutch equivalent of Rolls-Royce, it was the world's first ever four-wheel drive car. And what an absolute joy it is. If we open the hatch here, there we are. Look at that, what a massive engine that is. Eight and a half litre, six cylinder, the world's first six cylinder car engine. An absolute feast of brass and iron. Have a whiff of that. But it's what's underneath this huge engine that makes no road impassable for this first supercar. I'm talking about a four-wheel drive system. On a normal car, only one axle is connected to the engine. But on the Spyker, a second massive drive shaft connects the other wheels too. Right, let's crank it up and give it a go. Listen to that, the sound of the world's first six-cylinder car engine. Music! Sitting alongside me here is Ron, my co-pilot for the day, and he's going to keep an eye on the lubrication department via the oil drip system, and also he's going to keep the fuel pressurised via this plunger here. The only problem is that although the oil is delivered to the parts of the engine and chassis that need it, some of the oil tends to get into the braking system. We'll worry about that later, shall we? The Spiker's four-wheel drive gives it a brilliant combination of power and grip on any surface, no matter how slippery, which gives it fantastic acceleration. Its inventor, Jacobus Spiker, built it as a racer, hoping its four-wheel drive system would give him an edge over the competition. And it certainly did that when, in 1906, he entered it for Britain's prestigious Birmingham Hill Climb. The hill was so steep, the co-driver had to pump away at the special fuel tank pressurizer, so petrol could flow from the tank at the back to the engine at the front. It was pouring with rain, which gave the Spiker a massive advantage over its two-wheel drive rivals. As they slipped and struggled at the bottom of the hill, the Spiker raced away with its four-wheel drive mechanism, providing power to whichever of its wheels had grip. Topping 68 miles an hour, an incredible speed for the time, it flashed across the finish line and won! It's actually quite difficult to demonstrate its hill climbing capability because we're in the home of the Spiker, which is in fact Holland. Not well known for its hills. But brilliant as four-wheel drive was, it had one major drawback. Tight corners. On all cars, when you go around a bend, the front wheels take a slightly different path to the rear wheels. To demonstrate, I've painted the front wheels of this go-kart red and the rear wheels blue. Leaving their own different trail, the red front wheels are taking a wider, longer route round the circle than the blue rear ones. So, in order to get round the circle in the same time as the rest of the go-kart, the front wheels have to spin faster than the back ones. On an ordinary car or go-kart, where the engine's only driving one set of wheels, this is no problem. The front and back wheels are free of each other and can spin at different speeds. But for a four-wheel drive car like the Spiker, it's a completely different ball game. Because the front and back wheels on a 4x4 are both connected to the engine, they're effectively connected together and have to rotate at the same speed. This breaks all the laws of going round a bend, and the result is bad news. Tight cornering becomes really, really heavy as the wheels can't do what they naturally want to and so much strain is put on the drive system connecting the wheels that it tends to break a lot, especially if you corner quickly. So, despite being brilliant on slippery surfaces, 4x4s cornered appallingly, 
And that is largely why more cars from the Spyker onwards weren't built with four-wheel drive. 